Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands just like this. Things change when we call you Jesus. 
Things change when we call your Listen, name. I'm free. I'm, I'm free, free when I call you Jesus. I'm free when I call your name. I'm free. I'm free when I call you Jesus. I'm free. I'm free when I call you. Oh, name. say I'm free. I'm free when I call you Jesus. Come on, I'm free. I'm free when I call your name. I'm free. I'm free when I call you Jesus. And we thank you for freedom. I'm free when I call your name. Oh, say when I call your name. When I call your name. Say when I call your name. When I call your name. Say when I call your name. When I call your name. Say when I call your name. When I call your name. Say when I call your name. When I call your name. Oh, when I call your name. When I call your name. Demons tremble when we call. When I call your name. Demons tremble when we call. When I call your name. Atmosphere shift when we call. When I call your name. Everything must change when we when call. We call your
Jesus. Be lifted high. The name of Jesus. Be magnified. The name of Jesus. Be glorified. It's all in your name, God. We call on your name, God. We call on your name, God. There's victory in the name. Salvation in the name. Healing in the name. Peace in the name. True joy is in that name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, help me bless that name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh. Praise God. We owe you a thank you. We owe you a hallelujah. 
We owe you a bless your name, God, and we adore you, oh God. We come to brag on our God today. He's worthy today. It's not about us. It's not about mankind, but it's all about Jesus today. His Father said that that name shall be exalted above all names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And we give you glory today, God. We honor our God. We praise you. We thank you, God, for being our God, for being our shield, and for being our buckle, oh God. We thank you right now. Now, Lord, we send the word, God, to Sister Weedy, God, in the name of Jesus. Touch right now, God. Deliver right now, God, in the name of Jesus. We call those things, and though they be not God, as they already is, God. You see the situation turning around, God, for your glory, God. You see the great I am, I am. You see Alpha. You still the Omega. You still the beginning. And you're the end of this thing, God. And we give you glory, God. Strengthen that mind, God. Strengthen that body, God. In the name of Jesus. You ask Abraham, is there anything too hard for me? And I'll answer that by saying, no, God. I know you can, God. I know you will. Strengthen that body. Build that body back up, God. In the name of Jesus. I pray for those that are in the nursing home, God. Those that are behind prison walls, God. I lift up our leaders, God. The spiritual leaders, God, as well as the natural leaders, God. I send the word to the White House. There's no distance, God. In your word, God, you can clean up the White House. Clean up Congress. Clean it up, God, in the name of Jesus. I send your word, God, through the church house, God. Clean it up, God. Clean it up for your glory, God. Clean it up for your honor, God. I send your word through the schoolhouse, God. Clean it up, God. I send your word throughout this word, God. According to Psalm 107 and 20, God. You said you sent your word where I can't go. Your word can go, God. I send your word to your people, oh God. Strengthen that man, God. Strengthen that woman, God. In the name of Jesus, I command our young peoples come in out of the rain, God. In the name of Jesus, I command that they come in, oh God. According to your word, God. That husband that's not living like he's supposed to. I command in the name of Jesus that he come in out of the rain, God. That woman that's not living like she's supposed to live. I command that she come in out of the rain, God. Those children that's not living like they're supposed to live. I command that they come in out of the rain, God. Our uncles and our aunties, our nieces and our nephews, God. Come in, God, out of the rain, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Breathe on this world again, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Give them a mind to want to be saved, God. Save in the name of Jesus. You're the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore, God. In the name, stir, God. Put a stirring in this world, oh God, to the saints to cry aloud and spare not, to lift up their voice as a trumpet, God, in the house of Jacob, and so the, so the peoples can see where they have failed you at, God, and help us to do like Stephen did. Help us to bring our sisters in and point out where we left, God, so we can return back to him, oh God. Lord, we need you to lead and guide us, oh God. We need your wisdom, God. We need your guidance, God. We need your direction, man. Not man, God, but we need yours, God, to lead and to guide us in the way that we should go, oh God. Let your will be done, oh God. Lord, and just take control over this service, God. Just have your way in the name of Jesus. The master will be so careful to give you the praise. The glory and honor is already thine. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord.
my son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my saying. For they are life unto those that find them, and help to all their flesh. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Amen. Our affirmation of faith. We believe the Bible to be the inspired and only infallible written word of God. We believe that there is one, only one God eternally existent in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We believe in the blessed hope, which is the rapture of the church of God, which is in Christ at his return. We believe that the only means of being cleansed from sin is through repentance and faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We believe that regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body in answer to believing prayer. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to believers who ask for it. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen. the praise and the honor. We thank you, God, and we ask you to be with us now, God. We ask you to send your word, God. We ask you to bless the hearer and the doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank God for being here. This morning, I give honor to God. I give honor to Pastor Douglas and Sister Green, his wife, uh, our missionary, uh, Deacon Brothers, everybody in the house. Today, I thank and praise God for blessing us to be here one more time. God is a good God. He's a mighty good God. Yes, God. And, and God wants us to know him. He wants us to know about all the benefits and everything that he has for us. And he wants us to look to him. Uh, God the Father sent his son, Jesus, for us. That's what he did. And him coming, bringing us salvation, there's a lot of benefits in that when he came and gave us salvation. So I want to talk to you today, and you know when I was uh, studying this word, and I studied it, and I wrote notes, and, and then I had a title up there, and I said, no, I'm not going to use that title. 
so I started a new note. In in one while, I started, I said, well, I'm not going to speak on this. But I couldn't get away from it. And and then when I heard missionary up here talking this morning, I said, well, Lord, that was the right subject. I want, My subject was, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And and I'm going to tell you, I want you to do it the way God told me to ask y'all to do. We want to bless his name. We want to bless the Lord. We want to be thankful because he is good. When we go from one Sunday to the other and we come back and we pray and we're able to come back to God's house, that's God blessing us. That ain't nothing we've done. And that's God, that's God being good to us. You know, not because we didn't die. Because there's plenty of people that are not dead, but they're not in the house of the Lord. That's not on their mind. It's a blessing to have the mind to live for God. In these last and evil days, the effect that the pandemic has had on so many people, they have stopped going to the house of the Lord. They have stopped worshiping God. They're just going on about their business, doing whatever. But God is good, and he's worthy to be praised, and he wants us to praise him. He wants us to glorify him. In the book of Ephesians, I'm not going to read every cha- every verse, but uh, that in that first chapter, in verse 3 through 14, Paul is writing to these, these, these new saints, this, this new church in Ephesus, and he is he starts it off by praising God and exalting God and glorifying God. And, and in that third verse, he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And he said, all, and he's talking about spiritual blessings. These these blessings, you can't get them nowhere else. They come directly from God. And these blessings are eternal. Oh, yes, God, God is a mighty good God. He's a great God. He's an awesome God. So, uh, I remember, I thought about the song that Shirley Caesar wrote. She said, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. What God has given us, the world can't take it. And so it's a blessing, and we want to hold on to God's blessing, and we hold on to them by living for him. Paul had heard about these Ephesian saints. He had heard about their faith in, in Jesus, and he had heard about their love for the saints. And how many know that we get started in the in when we get saved, we get started on this highway. And you know, you remember how you felt when you first got saved? You remember how you felt when God just He He brought you in? He took that old man away from you. We know we didn't do it, don't we? We know it was God. It was Him that touched us. Nobody but Him. But as we go along in this way, the enemy is talking to you. Things are happening in your life. We get slack, and, and we, we, we get the feeling like it's just going to happen automatically. But it's not happening automatically. It is God. So he wrote to those saints, and he was encouraging them. God blessed us. The first thing he did when he, he sent his son Jesus, he sent his son Jesus. And we know that God was the one that did it. All our blessings come from him. No need in us to get lifted up. I don't care what it is God has blessed us with. We do just like the missionary told us this morning. We praise God for it. We glorify him for it. We don't get like we, we all that. It's nothing to us, but it's God that bless us. All blessings. It said all. They, they, they come from God. God sent Jesus. He, he, he sent Jesus to die for us, and he, he said, except, he said, when he was talking to Nicodemus in the third chapter of John, he told him, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And he said, and you know, Nicodemus didn't understand that. He said, how can a man be born again? Because he was thinking naturally. It was a spiritual blessing and only God can have you 
cause you to be born again in your spirit. That spirit man be changed. Only God can do it. So when God do, does it, he wants us to praise him. In that 16th verse, we all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's a blessing from God. We, we hear that scripture all the time. Don't take it lightly. Don't get casual with it. Don't take it for granted. He loved us, and he provided a way for us to be delivered. We were lost on our way to the devil's hell. But God, in his great love, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever. And look what he, how he fixed it. He didn't, we don't have to do nothing but believe. He said that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what God has given to us. Just believe on him. It's a spiritual birth. We were, like I said, we were on our way to hell, mankind, with the devil and his angels. But God in his grace and wisdom and mercy, he blessed us spiritually. Yes, we talk about when God bless us, he bless us with a job, he bless us with a car, he bless us with money, all these natural blessings. And that is good. Yes, and we thank God. We give him the praise because he's the one that's opening the door and making a way from it. He said he's the one that gives man the power to get wealth. I don't care who you are, uh, the richest man on earth, whoever it is, all these billionaires, they got their money, and the, those that are not glorifying God, it still came from God. God did it, and he blessed them. And so we talk about that. We thank God for that. That's good. But these things are only temporal. The greatest blessing are the spiritual blessings, the blessing that's going to get us from earth to glory. Oh, in Psalms 107, verse 1, it said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Aren't you thankful for the mercy of God? Will you bless his name? Bless his name, saints. Bless him for his mercy. It's his mercy. We're saved because of his mercy. Nothing we could do to earn it. We, we get up every morning, and guess what? He said his mercies are new every morning. Ain't God good? Bless his name. Thank him for it. We thank him and we praise him. Oh, God, we don't want to get used to it. You know, when you, when you have something for a while and it looks like, you know, it starts getting old, we don't treat it with much care. But, God, we want to treat him all the time. Oh, he's new to every day. We want to bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to bless the name of Jesus. In Ephesians 2 and 8, he said, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. How many of you like it when somebody gives you a gift you weren't even looking for? It? Just They just give you a gift just because. Why did God give us Jesus? Because he loved us. He gave him to us. Nobody asked for it. They didn't know to ask for it. Nobody knew the way. Nobody knew how to get to sin. They didn't even, at the beginning, they didn't even know they were in sin. They didn't know they were in sin until God sent the law. They didn't know they were wrong. Yes, they were doing all kind of wicked things. They were going about just doing wicked. But God sent the law. Then they knew they were wrong, but they still couldn't do nothing about it. But God did something about it. You know, when he made that promise way back when he, when he, when he in the Garden of Eden, when he said that he was going to bruise his head, when he made that promise, he kept making promises on down that Jesus was coming. They didn't know what he was talking about. They didn't know what the way was. But here we are today. Well, all we do is receive Jesus. We know now. We know the mystery. We know what God was talking about. That's a blessing. Praise God. Praise God. Everybody's eyes are not open. Everybody don't see that. There are many people in the world that don't even believe it. They won't receive it. But we are blessed for our eyes to be open. It's a blessing. 
And you know, if we praise God and glorify him, don't you know he's going to come in some more? He's going to bless us some more. Yes, he will. Every time. There ain't no such thing that he's not doing. We walk through those doors. It, it, we don't have to just praise him here, but we show enough going to praise him when we come to his house. What we're coming to his house for? Yes, we come together to, to worship and praise God. Yes, in the name of Jesus. So when we praise God, he's going to bless us. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. God, has, in Ephesians 1 and 4, he said, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Yeah. Now, when he said before the foundation of the world, that was way before anybody was here. So we know it's nothing we've done. We know it's just the goodness of God. He's good to us. Yes, he is. And that God, before the beginning of the world, he chose us. And that's, that's beautiful that he chose us. He didn't choose those angels. Those angels that, that went with the devil, he didn't choose them. No, he didn't, but he chose us. We, it's a blessing that we can be saved. We can receive him. So we don't want to treat it any kind of way. No, we don't. In, uh, he, it says that he predestinated us. He predestined us to be his. Yes, he did. Look how he was looking out for you. He, I want you. I don't care what the devil has done. I want you. And he, in that sixth verse, he said he made us accepted in the beloved. He, he, he made us accepted in Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, his beloved son. He made us accepted in him. Because we have received Jesus Christ, he made us accepted. He, he, when he look at us, he don't see us, but he see the blood of Jesus. So, you know, when we think about that, when, when, when we, as we go going through the day, we praise God for the covering of the blood. We give God the glory for sending his son, Jesus. Oh, yes, God, we don't want to take it for granted because we hear nothing we've done. Oh, if we got what we deserve, we've been cut off a long time ago. I thank God that he is a good God. In, in Acts 4 and 12, he said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Peter was telling those people because they had crucified Jesus. They thought they had gotten rid of him. But on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost fell, they wanted to know, what is this? They wanted to know, what, what's going on? And he said, it's all because of Jesus. It's what Jesus has done. Look what God, how God, how mindful he is of us. That great salvation that he has given us. Oh, yes. Look, he, he, he planned it. Jesus came down through 42 generations. Look how he came uh, they, they, the devil tried to get in there and tried to wipe him out, tried to keep Jesus from coming, but he couldn't stop him. Just like he can't stop him, he can't, all the rules and things that they say, it don't matter. They can put up fences, they can put up bars, they can put locks, they can put rules and regulations, everything in place, but it can't stop God. God is God. He has all power in his hand. That's, that's why, uh, I want to get ahead of myself. In that, in that, uh, in that Ephesians one through eight, uh, the seventh verse. He gave he gave them the redemption. He gave us redemption. He gave us forgiveness. He gave us grace. He repossessed us. He took us back from that devil that stole us, and he did it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, God, he made the devil take his hands off of me. I thank God for forgiving me. I thank him for saving me. Yes, God, I thank him for giving me a way out. I thank him for that. In Ephesians, in that 8th and ninth verse, that first chapter, uh, he said, wherein he has abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, here having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. This, this is better. This, they didn't know the mystery. 
And, and this, he said he has a bound toward us. He has showered us in the richness of his grace. He, he, and, but it's up to us to dig for it. It's up to us to work to get it. Don't just, just, he didn't just save us just to say I'm saved, but there's more to it. And we continue on. We live for God and do what he says. We obey his word. We pray to him. And the more we do that, the more he's going to take us deeper in him. He's going to take us higher in him. Yes, he is. Uh, in Matthew, the 13th chapter and 11th verse, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to them it is not given. It's a blessing that God is opening up our understanding. So we don't worry about the world. No, they don't see what you see. They don't understand what you understand, but you understand it. God gave it to you. Take it and run with it. Thank God for it. Bless him for it. So if you're saved today, it's given to you to know. He's, and and he, Paul was thanking God for these saints, and he was praying for them. And what was he praying for them? He was praying for them that God would give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. He was praying that the eyes of their understanding be enlightened. And he wanted them that the understanding to be enlightened so they would know what is the hope of his calling. Why is he called you? What are you called to? Yeah, God, God wants us. We, this life is temporal. When he sent the Holy Ghost, uh, it said the earnest of his uh, inheritance. And it, it was a down payment on our salvation on, that God said you belong to him. And he, Jesus is coming back to get you. So, And he wanted us to know what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance among the saints. You know, people want to be rich, and they want to know rich people. They want to have connection with them. But it ain't nothing like being with God. Because with God, we, are, we, are, are, we have access to everything we need. We have access to it. So it says the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. His immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness of his spiritual power. This, what God has done for us, is a great thing. And we, we, we have to think about it. We have to study his word and see what does he say about what he has done for us when he saved us. And he demonstrated his great power to us. When he raised God, when he raised Jesus Christ from the dead, and he set him in heavenly places, and where is he setting? It said above all principalities, above all power, and might, and do dominion over every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all the things to the church, which is his body. That's us, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Jesus is above all principalities. He said all power. That, that means princes, prince, princes, princesses, any other monarch, any president. You know, people got these titles in front of their name, and they think they run and think. But God said he's running it, and he gave it to his son, Jesus. Oh, and everything falls under Jesus. That's why, thanks to God, we don't worry about what people say. I don't care who they are. I don't care what kind of title they have. I tell my children all the time, I worked at that VA for 32 years, but I told them God taught me that I work for him, not for them. He gave me that job, and he told me I work for him. So every day I would pray. I, when I was having trouble, I would pray, and I'd say, Lord, I don't want to go to this job. I want another job, but I'm going, and I'm going to work as unto you. And I went in, and God sent my boss right behind me and said, come here. I got another job for me. That's God. Yes, and I thank God. Now, God was showing himself strong. He's showing us. He's showing us how good he are how good he is, and that he is in control, not man. Remember, we do what God say. 
Oh, yes, we, we obey God. He demonstrated this. And he didn't do this for us to be rebellious and have an attitude and say, you don't tell me what to do. But he did it for us to trust him. Yeah. When the person says something, we don't worry about what they're saying. We're trusting God. God's will will be done. Yeah. And we got to believe that. Yes, God. I thank God when I went to that new job. And I started working there, and I'd been there about two years, and then they came, they went to a meeting. They didn't call me to the meeting. When they came back from the we meeting, they say, they deleting your job. They're getting rid of your job. And my answer was to them was, well, they ain't said nothing to me, so I don't care. And I went on about my business. You know when they deleted that job? Two years after I left it. I applied for another job, and that job was deleted two years after I left it. But I forgot about it. I had forgotten all about it. But God brought it back to my remembrance. So he lets us know it doesn't matter what God, whatever God gives you. It doesn't matter if it's natural or spiritual. What God gives you, nobody can take away from you because he is in control. So we can bless him at all times. We can glorify him at all times. That's why we can praise him in the midst of trouble, in the midst of problems. No matter what's going on, we can praise and glorify God because he is God. Peter and John told those people, he said, they said unto them when they was telling them, don't preach in the name of Jesus, they said, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. But they went on and they kept preaching in the name of Jesus. And then the, in the fifth chapter of Acts, Peter and the other apostles answered them and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. They weren't being cocky or rebellious. It wasn't anything personal. They worked for the one with all power in his hand and had given them power. They did what thus say the Lord. Yes, when it comes against, when anything comes against us obeying God, we choose to obey God. Praise God. He is a good God. Yes, God. So he wrote to those saints, and then he, he said, don't, don't slow and don't go back to doing wrong. Uh, God has given us power. He's given us access to him. There, there is no excuse for nobody to go back on God. That's a foolish choice that we make. We don't have to. We can live for God, not, not just because he when he save us, he ain't, his power didn't get weak. He can't do no more. He can keep us. Yes, and all we have to do is go to him. When Jesus went back to heaven, he sent the Holy Ghost. And he gave us gifts for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, the church. He gave us gifts, all this stuff. That's why it's important for us to know our gifts. Know our gifts and let God work through us because the gifts are for the perfecting of the church. And if he gave us a gift and we're not using it, we're lacking in that gift right there. And we don't want to be lacking. Let God use you. Let him use you. Whatever way, if it ain't nothing but exalting the thanks to praise God, let him use you. Let him use you to his glory and to his honor. Don't forget, as so many have forgotten, the day and time that we're living in. So many saints have forgotten that we are holy. The call of God is a holy call. And it's all according to what he say. We can't make our own brand of holiness. We can't call it what we want to call it. Oh, yes, he, he, when he wrote to these saints, that's what he ended up telling them. Oh, don't forget, don't forget, don't go back into all this wicked stuff fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, foolish talking, justin, drinking. Do you know how, how drinking is on the rise in the church? Looks like that would be an obvious thing. But somebody's been deceived. We don't want to be deceived. We want to stay with the Lord. We want to stay with what he has done in our life and let him continue. Because when he saved us, he didn't stop. He did, when he saved us, he wants to continue 
to save us. He wants to continue to bring us out. Yes, he wants to bring us out till we're shining like pure gold. Yeah. Yes, he does. So if you're saved today, God's great power is operating in your life. Let it work. Yeah. Let it work. Yeah. Thank him for all the spiritual blessings, his mercy, his peace, his joy, his spirit yeah. with us, his word. Yes, God, everything that he has given us. His, every morning he says mercy is new. Yeah. We thank God for that because when we trip up, and we mess up. All we got to do is repent. Yeah. Get it right. Yeah. When God bring it, he going to bring it to our mind. He going to bring it to our understanding. So when we know that we messed up, we get it right. So we want to thank God for all our spiritual blessings. He gives us and we will, and, and that he is with us every day. He wants to abound toward us in wisdom. He, he wants us to be wiser and wiser in him. So everything that we have is because of him, and he and we don't have half of what he wants us to have. Yes, yeah, so we want to praise him. We want to glorify him, thank him, and bless him, and stay in his word.